we all love Jira. It has so many features and then so many companies actually work with it. I think it makes sense for us to know how it works so that we can help our teams be better and improve. And today I want to show you some cool features that can save you a lot of time and give you some extra information that would be more difficult to find on your own. Hey, it's Dari here. Welcome. In today's video, I want to look into a cool app or tool that you can add into Jira to give you some new features and functionalities and also save you some time finding important information. And this is called Script Runner by Adaptivist. This is an app that automates, customizes, and extends Jira to fit the needs of any team or business, saves time, improves efficiency, transforms Jira, and aligns it with companies' processes. This video is sponsored by Script Runner, which means that I actually had access to their sales and to their dev teams to help me with some of the features so that I can show you some really customized and very specific use cases that will make sense to you and me, well, Scrum Masters. The tool is a bit technical, but, well, I made sure that what we're going to look into today is very easy to use and you can just copy paste exactly what I'm doing and start using it without the need for any technical skills or even really knowing Jira in detail. Although it is a technical tool, there are lots of useful resources such as library scripts, built-in scripts, in-app script examples, in-depth documentation, training and demo videos, and a support team that can help customers with any questions. Let me quickly show you the three use cases that could be very helpful for you and for your team that you can use with Script Runner. So when you're on the Script Runner website, you can click on Cloud Trial. It's going to take you to the Atlassian Marketplace where you can click on Try It Free and you do have a free version of the Script Runner uh, for under 10 users. If you have less than 10 users, you can try it out and see how it works and then decide whether you want to continue using it. You can actually try it out on your own Jira instance, like create a free Jira account and see how it works. When you're clicking on the try it free, it will install it on your Jira. Let's go into Jira and see how it looks. So you will either end up on this page that says, welcome to your Script Runner home, and then you can go into script console and start looking into everything here, or you might also end up on this page. Here are a few things that I want us to look into more specifically that are very good use cases that can be helpful for you. First thing first is that script runner comes with enhanced search. Enhanced search comes as a part of script runner, but can also be installed as a separate standalone app in Jira. I'll link it down in the description. If you go into the enhanced search, you can actually start doing some good things and easy things to gain some information about your sprints and the tickets you have in your sprints just using their enhanced search without having to know JQL. So if you go into filters and just go into the advanced issue search that we usually use to identify specific issues, um, you need to know how to write the query. I will talk about it maybe in one of the videos, but yeah, it, it has a pretty steep learning curve and Script Runner can help you with some very specific use cases. More specifically, add it after Sprint. I think this is a very important one. So this is a function that you can add into your Script Runner Enhanced Search Console. And basically for every Sprint in your team, you can look into what has been added after you start the sprint, which is a very important metric to track, especially if your team is struggling with changing priorities, constantly changing priorities. You can actually use this metric, show this metric to your stakeholders, your product owner, just to highlight how many issues, how much new work that actually comes into the sprint. So how do you do that? If you are starting just here, I have saved some of the filters here, but when you click on um, here, search with JQL, you don't need to do that. You just click on plus sign, and then you have all of the different available functions and more specific ones, you, you're free to discover what is there. But the one that I'm talking about here is the added after a sprint start. You just need your board name and your sprint name. 
And this is the information that you can get just from your board. If you're going onto your board for your project, right? In the address bar, you can find the board ID. So it says board four, right? And then the sprint name obviously is right here. But when you're going to enhance search, you can say board four and then the sprint name CJP sprint four. So add query and this is going to just start searching and we'll find the information for you. And then you can quickly just change the name of the sprint to find this information for other cases. And as you can see, there are many different other use cases that you can look into and you can use that would be very easy to get started with and to get gain some of this, those valuable metrics that you can use to help your team get better. Other use cases can be found under script runner for Jira more specifically. And then we're going to go to script console right here. And you don't need to know any code. You can actually use their library and just copy paste the code right into your Jira to help you with some of the tasks. For example, right here, if you click on script listeners, you can add different things. So these are just examples that come with the script runner. Script listeners execute an action automatically in response to a specific event in Jira. For example, like creating an issue. I added another one, and this is basically a use case that creates subtasks when a new issue is created. And you can actually, you don't need to know any code. You don't code here at all whatsoever. You come in here, you name your script, you make sure that you choose when it needs to be run. Well, in this case, every time a new issue is created in our project, we want to have a set of subtasks to be created. I, I chose which projects it's going to be created in, and then I copy pasted this code. And I'm going to give you this code as well in the blog post. Where did I find it? Well, I didn't write it. I went to the Adaptivist library right here. As you can see, when you come here, you can go into Script Runner for Jira, and there are 242 different use cases that already exist that you can kind of go into right here and just copy the script and see maybe which use cases make sense for you. I took specifically this one, create subtask when issue is created, just came in here, copy paste, and then went back into the script runner. And then the only thing that I did actually change, if you go in here and you have a list of summaries in line 21 is I have identified what subtasks I want to create. Right, so I have five subtasks, define the solution, write unit tests, get P PR reviews, merge into QA environment, and test in QA environment. So whenever a new issue is created in one of my projects, these five subtasks will be created. And it is a good use case, especially if your team is maybe struggling or doesn't want to create subtasks, but having subtasks can be so beneficial for helping you track progress, especially visually on the Kanban board. If you don't have subtasks, you will have difficulty figuring out whether you're still on track or not. With this, it actually removes that tedious part of creating subtasks that you need to do manually for every subtask and instead just sets them up for you. And usually your team will always go through kind of the same set of subtasks or the same set of things they need to do for every ticket, especially for things like definition of done, right? You can actually use it as a definition of done for yourself to double check that everything has been completed. And that's automated. You don't need to do anything. You just save. And whenever a new issue is created, just making sure that it is enabled, you have new subtasks created. So it's a very good use case. All the codes will be obviously in the blog post. Another thing that I wanted to show you is when you click on scheduled jobs, scheduled jobs is a feature that allows you to automate the running of scripts at regular intervals, saving you time and reducing the risk of error. The same, you can actually add examples and this example comes with script runner. So you don't even need to go and copy paste anything at all when you create the the exam when you just import the examples from script runner and this is can be a very good use case as well so this basically creates a new release in jira every single week on thursdays so i have chosen thursdays at 12 and what it will do it will just every thursday around 12 it will run the script like on a schedule 
and will create a new release slash version that can be helpful, especially if your team is doing regular releases, continuous deployment, and will just recreate all of those releases for you. You don't need to create them on your own. And then the only thing you need to do is to organize your tickets in your backlog using those releases that you have identified. And the same, the code will be available. I didn't write this code. The only thing I did is you need to, here it was actually said test. You just need to put in the, the project key for your project, more specifically in which project you want your releases to be created. And then you can also identify the name. For example, here it will say version number, and then it will give the release date. And then basically this is how it will create it. If I go into the releases, this is the release that has been created automatically. I didn't do anything and it will just run this job automatically. Nothing you need to do. And basically this just automates a lot of the tasks that can save your team so much time that can automate some of those tedious tasks that your team doesn't want to do because it does take time. But with the, without doing that, they are losing their opportunities to actually improve their processes, their workflows, and even just to understand how well they're doing, how they're progressing. And ScriptRunner can help you with a lot of that. Just look into their library that I'm going to link in the description and all of the code snippets will be in the blog post as well. There are much more features that are available that you can see in the menu on the left. It provides you with various use cases and ways you can automate, customize, and extend Jira with ScriptRunner. For example, with workflow extensions, you can gain more control over how and when an issue transitions in Jira by automating and extending your workflows beyond the native possibilities. I'll add the link to learn more about it in the description. Some final thoughts on the tool. I think it may look a bit complicated at first when you're getting started, and I definitely needed help from the ScriptRunners team to help me figure out how it works but I have shown you everything I know and I think you need to know. Obviously, if you have developers who can help you figure out some of the scripts and make them even more customized, you can definitely benefit from Script Runner even more. So work with your team and see what are some of the things, maybe some tedious tasks, that are preventing them from really using Jira and enjoying Jira, find some of the examples in the Adaptivist library of how you can use Jira and how you can facilitate your team's life, really, when using Jira and help them automate tedious tasks, get some inform additional information about the work that they do and customize the way Jira works for you and for your team. I looked into a few very specific cases. I looked into the script runners advanced search, which can be a good start for you if you're not very familiar with how to use advanced search in Jira with JQL's queries and instead how to use script runners enhanced search without the need to know any of that query language. We also looked into how to create subtasks for newly created issues. And if you can get help from some of your developers on your team, you can even make it very, very specific to every single different type of task. We also looked into how to automatically create releases so that you don't have to do it manually and it just kind of comes every single week or every single sprint, single month. And this is something that can be easily really help you organize your work and track your progress towards different goals that your team is working on. Thank you, ScriptRunner, for sponsoring this video and giving me access to your developers and to your sales team who helped me understand the tool even more so that I can share it with you in an easy to use way that can give you some quick wins right away. I will put all of the links in the description to the ScriptRunner library and just their pages where you can download and install it, as well as my blog post where you will be able to find all of the code snippets that you can just copy and paste into your Jira to start using it immediately. What do you think? Will you use this tool? What kind of possibilities this can open up for you and your Scrum team? I hope you learned something new. And if you did, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers and Scrum on.